This morning we will sing Sri Brajadam Mahimamrita. Don't put it so low, put it up a bit. Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan. Jaya Radhe, Jaya Krishna, Jaya Vrindavan. Madhana Moha Shri Govinda Gopina Madhana Moha Shyama Kunda Radha Kunda Kiri Govada Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Kalindi Yamuna Jaya Jaya Mahavan Kalindi Yamuna Jaya Jaya Mahavan Jaya 
Kesi gata van si bata dvadasa kana Gata Vamsi Vata Dvadasa Kana Bali la koilo Shivasantara Ya hasa Bali la koilo Ananda Shri Nanda Yashoda Jaya Jaya Gopaka Jaya Shoda Jaya Jaya Gopaga Shri Damadi Jaya Jaya Shri Damadi Jaya Jaya Dinu Vatsaka Jaya Vrisha Anu Jaya Kirti Da Sundari Jaya Vrisha Anu Jaya Kirti Da Sundari Jaya Purnamasi Jaya Abhirana Jaya Purnamasi Jaya Abhiranagari
Jaya Gopish Jaya Jaya Gopishwara Vrindavana Jaya Jaya Gopeshwara Vrindavana Jaya Jaya Krishna Shaka Jaya Jaya Krishna Shaka Bhatta Dvijara Jaya Rama Gata Jaya Rohini Nanda Jaya Rama Gata Jaya Rohini Nanda Jaya Jaya Vrindavan Vasu Jata Jahan Jaya Jaya Vrindavan Vrindavan Vatu Dvata Jahan Jaya Dvi Chapatni Jaya Naga Kunya Gahan Jaya Dvi Chapatni Jaya Naga Kunya Gahan Tara Pailo Govinda Chara Tara Pailo Govinda Chara
Shrirata Mandala Jaya Jaya Radha Shyam Shri Rasa Mandala Jaya Jaya Radha Shyam Jaya Jaya Rasa Lila Sarvamano Rama Jaya Jaya Rasa Lila Sarvamano Raham Jaya 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 Rasa Sarva Rasa Saham Jai Jai Jala Rasa Sarva Rasa Saha Jai 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 Brachatipacha 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 Shri Janava Padma Padma Koriya Smaraham Shri Janava Padma Padma Kori Asmaran Dina Krishna Dasa Kare Nama Sankirta Dina Krishna Dasa Kohe Nama Sankirta Nitha Gaur Haribo 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 Nitha Gaur Haribo Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're reading the Upadesha Amrita and we're on text number three. We'll just chant the verse. Utsahan nischaya dairya Tattat karma pravartanat Sangat chagat sato vrite Shadbir bhaktir vinashit prasidyati Translation, there are six principles favorable to the execution of pure devotional service. One, being enthusiastic. Two, endeavoring with confidence. Three, being patient. Four, acting according to regulated principles such as Shravanam, Kirtan, Vishnu, Smaranam, hearing, chanting and remembering Krishna. Five, abandoning the association of non-devotees and six, following in the footsteps of the previous acharyas. These six principles undoubtedly assure the complete success of pure devotional service. Right? Who remembers how did we define enthusiasm? Okay. Very good, yes. All right. So, we're reading Prabhupada's purport. If one strictly follows the advice given in the verse by Srila Rupa Goswami, namely, being enthusiastic, being confident, being patient, giving up the association of unwanted persons, following the regulative principles, and remaining in the association of devotees, one is sure to advance in devotional service. In this regard, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati remarks that the cultivation of knowledge by philosophical speculation, the collection of mundane opulence by the advancement of fruitive activities, and the desire for yoga siddhis, material perfection, are all contrary to the principle of devotional service. One has to become thoroughly callous to such non-permanent activities and turn his, in, turn his intention instead to the regulated principles of devotional service. As described in Bhagavad Gita 2.69, Yanisha Sarva Bhuta. What is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-realized or self-controlled. And the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective sage. So we see the difference, the comparison between the life of the devotee and the life of those who are just dedicated to material life. That what is night for the devotee is the time for the materialistic people, right? In the, in the, in the night, the devotees will take rest. <laughs> materialistic people, they're awake. Uh, I was in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, they told me, this is the city, they don't sleep at night. Heavy traffic on the roads at midnight. And so many restaurants open in the night, in the midnight even. People come to eat meals in the middle of the night. So this is how materialistic people organize their life. Devotees, we're the opposite. When they wake up, 
we go to sleep. And when they go to sleep, we wake up. We're coming, often we're going to temple, Mongol Arti, and we see the materialistic people going home. So this is the unfortunate lifestyle of materialistic people. I remember in London, Mong there used to be this young man coming every morning for Mongolarti. So I said, oh, it's very good, you're coming from Mongolarti. He said, yeah, I'm, I'm just coming home from work. <laughs> and he said, I work in a casino. <laughs> Krishna. Not very ideal lifestyle. Some people, they have that unfortunate. Okay, so the lifestyle of the devotee, very different. And Prabhupada's telling us, if you follow this process, then certainly you will become Krishna conscious. It's a scientific process. You follow the science, you get the result. You do the, if you do everything correctly, you get the results. If you're not, if something, if you're still keeping all your material attachments, if you're still becoming troubled by material desires, it must be we're doing something wrong. We're not, prop we're not properly practicing the principles of devotional service. Because when we follow strictly, when we follow the process, certainly you get the results. And the result is, the example is given just like when a man eats a good meal. Then with a good, the man in the, before the meal, he's hungry. But as he's eating the meal, he's feeling relief from hunger. He's feeling nourishment and satisfaction. One thing, it's all coming as he eats, one bite after another. Relief from hunger, nourishment and satisfaction. Jai Radha Madhava, Gornitai. Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. So in the same way, when we practice devotional service, we will get also freedom from material attachment and we will, we will get that detachment from the material existence and we will get realization of the self. We'll, be, we'll actually become more convinced of our spiritual identity as spirit souls and we will have a relate we'll develop that relationship with krishna we will start to feel more connected to krishna it all comes about just by following the process just like the hungry man eats food and he goes on eating and then he gets satisfaction. So in the same way you practice devotional service, we will experience spiritual satisfaction. We will lose the desire for any kind of materialistic sense gratification. It just fades away, goes this is the nature of devotional service. The reactions to our past sins, sometimes they're compared to birds. Just like the birds come and they eat all the, the rice in the fields. If you don't put chemicals, then the birds will come, they'll eat everything. We had the experience in Mayapur. We were trying to grow rice, <laughs> but we wanted to do it without pesticides, with, and <laughs> we lost money. We thought we're going to make so much, so we, we, had, we had all this land, so we grew rice, but the birds, oh, so many birds coming all day, from <laughs> and so we ended up very little rice. Most of it all got eaten by the birds. But if you clap your hands, just like if you're willing to stay out there in the field and clap your hands, keep the birds away. As soon as you clap their hands, the birds fly away. In the same way, 
the birds of sinful activities, they fly away. The bad karma, the reactions, the desire for sin, they're just like these birds. And just like we come in the kirtan and we clap our hands and we dance and chant, the birds of sinful activities all fly away. All the lines on our hand change as soon as you start doing devotional service. Some devotees, they heard there's a, there was a, a famous uh, astrologer and they went to see the astrologer. They wanted to know their future from the astrologer. But the astrologer told them, he said, he said, no, he said, you people are doing bhakti yoga, you're devotees. He said, I can't tell what will, what will be your future because your devotional activities completely change everything. For ordinary materialistic people, they can apply astrology, they can think about it. But for devotees, <laughs> because every devotional activity, every day coming, seeing the deities, chanting, taking prasadam, all the activities which we do, they completely change, nullify all of the effects of our past karma. It's all, doesn't have any meaning anymore. So that is the power of devotional service. And you can see people like Magrari the hunter. He was so sinful. He was doing so, so much sin, trapping the animals, keeping them in traps dying a slow death, but he became a devotee. And after chanting, after, after a little association with Angira and Narada, even little insects he wouldn't harm. He would sweep the little insects out of the path. So like that, Jagai and Madhai, they were so sinful, there was no sin they had not performed. It, said, it is said the secretary of Yamaraj, Chitragupta, had a hard time to keep up with all their sinful activities. They'd done so many sins. But then they surrendered. They became devotees. And they became very gentle, humble Vaishnavas. And they made the Magai, the, the Jagai Ghat, in, near Mayapur, there's one Ghat where they made the Ghat because they asked, what can we do to make up for our offense because we hit Lord Nityananda on the head? So what can we do to atone for that? So they were told, you make a Ghat on the bank of the Ganga and when the Vaishnavas come, you can serve them. And so they did that. They made the Ghat there, the, the bank of the Ganga, and the devotees, people would come there to bathe, and they would, they would massage them, and they would fold their clothes for them, and they would do all kinds of service for people who came there to take bath. So you can see such a transformation in them. How before they were so sinful, drunkards, but then they become devotees. And so there are so many Jagai and Madais came to the Krishna consciousness movement and they were delivered. I was just hearing about one person in Europe that was a woman and she became a devotee before she'd been a drunkard. But then she became a devotee and now she's so eager to spread Krishna consciousness. Every day trying to distribute books and tell people about Krishna. So totally changed. So this is the nature of devotional service. That it can transform the life of the world's misdirected civilization, right? Prabhupada and Srimad Bhagavatam, he talks about how these words in Srimad Bhagavatam can bring about a revolution 
in the impious lives of the world's misdirected civilization. So this is the world we're living in. It's misdirected. We're thinking the goal of life is money. <laughs> People are all thinking money is the honey. They don't know Krishna is sweeter than honey. Money will, can simply bring so many problems, so many headaches. But we know how to use it. If people have problems with money, bring the money here, we will spend it all for Krishna. Build nice temples, put on nice festivals, distribute nice prasadam, like that. So, yesterday we went there to this uh, Sri Vaishnava place. It's, what was it? The seat of Equin equality, right? Hmm? Oh, statue of equality, okay. Statue of equality. So, we didn't see really, we saw a lot of deities, but <laughs> because they have the 108 Divya Tirthas there. But none of the deities are as beautiful as the deities here. You know? They, they don't, they, the, although they put a lot of importance in the Sri Vaishnavism, they put a lot of, um, their main activity is worship of the deity and puja, archana. But they don't have beautiful deities as we have here. Mm. And they don't make sumptuous offerings as we make for our deities, right? Our deities are the best dressed, they're the best fed, <laughs> and they get, also we have nice kirtan for them, we're doing so many things, and we're also speaking on the scriptures, which is also for the pleasures of the deities. But these other temples, what do they do? They ring a bell. <laughs> I give you some tosi and a little charanamrita water. It doesn't have quite the same taste as Krishna consciousness. But one thing I noticed, the, the people, they're very happy to see us. They really, they really like devotees and many people were saying Hare Krishna. <laughs> they, they're very interested in our, in our Krishna consciousness movement. So, uh, we're, we're not competing with them, of course, but uh, we work together. Prabhupada said, in the light of the Bhagavatam, he describes in the light of the Bhagavatam, there's a need for all the different religions, all the different groups and different religions and sects, they should all come together and chant the holy name and, and tell the whole world, what, enlighten the whole world about the goal of life, that people need to be awakened because people are so lost. Although they had such a big temple, there's not many people there. <laughs> there's we want to fill the temple, right? Fill the temple with devotees. So, we're trying to do these things, show people that there is hope if we preach, if we take up the message of Krishna consciousness. Everyone can become God conscious. All right, so Prabhupada says, engagement in the devotional service of the Lord is the life and soul of the living entity. It is the desired, it is the desired goal and supreme perfection of human life. One has to become confident about this and one also 
has to be confident that all activities other than devotional service, such as mental speculation, fruitive work, or mystic endeavor, will never yield any enduring benefit. Complete confidence in the path of devotional service will enable one to attain his desired goal, but attempting to follow other paths will only succeed in making one restless. In the seventh canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated, one must be calmly convinced that those who have given up devotional service to engage in severe austerities for other purposes are not purified in their minds despite their advanced austerities because they have no information of the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So Prabhupada said we have to be convinced that this is the highest thing. In Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, second chapter, Sutta Goswami was asked to give the essence of the message of the scriptures. All the sages of Naimasharanya had come and they were asking questions. And one of the questions they had, they wanted to know, what is the essence of all the scriptural teachings? And so Sutta Goswami answers that in the verse by saying, Savai Pumsam Paro Dharma. The supreme occupation, listen, listen to the words, the supreme occupation for all humanity to attain is loving service unto the Supreme Lord. Such service should be unmotivated and uninterrupted to completely satisfy the self. Devotional service is the supreme occupation. A software engineer is not the supreme occupation. Right? You may be studying in IIT. It's not the supreme occupation and doesn't guarantee the supreme occupation. The supreme occupation is to render service to the Supreme Lord. But that service to the Lord must be ahaitaki apratihata. It must be unmotivated and uninterrupted. Then it will completely satisfy the self. If we bring our own motivation into Krishna consciousness, that will be a problem. Different motivations we may have. Just like sometimes uh, we get devotees, they come from Bangladesh, <laughs> right? They come from Bangladesh to Mayapur. They come to Mayapur. And then from Mayapur they go to Juhu or Mumbai, right? And then when they get to Mumbai, then they want to go to America, <laughs> right? So that's uh, different motivations, you know, what they want, <laughs> different what. People come to Krishna consciousness, different desires. Somebody thinks, I'll make a lot of money. Somebody thinks, young women, some, like in, the, in the Eastern Europe, they have many young women. Young women come to Krishna consciousness, think, I will get a nice husband here. Nice young man. I'll find a nice husband for myself. Because they're... You know, there a lot of young women, they're looking for a suitable husband and they see the men today that they're all debauchees and they don't want, you know. It, the Dalai Lama came to Taiwan and when he was in Taiwan, he had a big program and all the monks came and all the monks were women. <laughs> the Dalai Lama was shocked, you know. He said, I've never seen so many women monks. You know, women Buddhist monks, they shave their head. In Buddhism, the women all wear the same dress as the men. You see? So, 
they'd all, they all came there to see the Dalai Lama. They don't, be, they don't want to get married because they know all the men are all debauchees. <laughs> they just become monks. Safer to be a monk than to be married to a debauchee and, and exploited. And so they feel much better become a monk. One man was asking me, one Buddhist monk I know, this was in China, there's a Buddhist monk I know in China, so he asked me, he said, uh, in Krishna consciousness, in the spiritual world, are there women there? <laughs> because in Buddhism, you see, in Buddhism, they don't make distinction between men and women. The women dress the same as the men. The women also shave their heads, you see. And so, so what happens? What's the goal? Everybody wants to become Buddha. The men become Buddha, the women become Buddha. Their goal is all just to become Buddha. And then their, when they get the perfection, they go to the, this, what do they call it? The, 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 the what is, uh, well, they don't call it that. They, have, they call it sila shijia. The, the, in Chinese, they call it sila shijia. It means the, 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 the Western world or something like that. Something like that. It's, it's anyway, their goal is to enter into this world and everyone is Buddha there. And so everybody's a Buddha. And they, they see monks like Buddha that they're all Buddhas, they're all... The, if you go to Thailand, in Thailand, Prat, are you a Prat? Are you Prat? Prat Buddha, Prat. <laughs> Prat means monk. <laughs> and so, they don't see distinction between men and women. So this Buddhist monk was asking me, do you have women in the spiritual world? So I told him, oh yeah, there are women in the spirit. He said, Huh? How, how, does it, how does it happen, you know, what do you do? I said, well, there are women and men in the spiritual world, but they're all pure devotees of Krishna. They're all so attached to Krishna that they don't think about the opposite sex. You see, it's inconceivable for people, but that is Krishna consciousness. We become fully absorbed in Krishna. We don't even think about the opposite sex, right? Just like Yamunacharya, he has this famous verse when he became a devotee. Yadavadi mamacheta navanavarasam tadavadi patanari sanganme smarayamane bhavati mukha vikara sastu nishtevanamcha Yes, the brahmacharis have to learn this verse. Right? All the brahmacharis should know this verse. Uh, he's in white. Brahmacharis all sit in silent. <laughs> but brahmacharis all should know this verse. It's a good verse to know. And Yamunacharya became a devotee before he'd been a king. He'd been a worldly man. He'd been enjoying the material world with in so many ways as a king. You know, kings have many wives and they have a lot of sense gratification. So Yamunacharya gave it all up and then became a, a devotee. And he said, whenever I think, he said, since I've been engaged in the transcendental loving service of Krishna, but whenever I think of the past, then my lips curl with distaste and I spit at the thought. Because he's been relishing the pleasure of Krishna consciousness and the loving exchange with the Lord and his devotees. But sometimes because of his past, he could remember the past. And so his lips curl with distaste, he would spit. One devotee said to Prabhupada, he said, Srila Prabhupada, he said, when I'm chant sometimes when I'm chanting, I remember what I was doing before I became a devotee. 
He said, I remember all the nonsense things I did as a devotee, but I'm chanting Hare Krishna. He said, why is it like that? And Prabhupada said, Krishna is telling you, if you ever give up being a devotee, you'll have to go back to that life again. So, <laughs> very nice instruction Prabhupada gave him. So we should understand Krishna consciousness that it's the supreme occupation. We should be convinced that this, there's nothing else apart from Krishna consciousness. There's n the material world has nothing to offer. There is nothing out there in that ugly world. You go into the multinational corporations and it's if maybe you get a job for Google, you're working for Google or Microsoft or all these places, does it mean you'll be happy? They're not happy. They're working, competing with each other. Everybody's trying to get the big position, to get the big post. Anytime they may kick you out, somebody doesn't like you, they'll get rid of you. You have to look for a new job. Even that, uh, that one who, man who developed Apple, what was his name? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, right, Steve Jobs. At one point he got kicked out of Apple. He, had to, he was out of Apple. They got rid of him and then he came back again. And, hmm. So like that material world is very unsecure. Working in these different places. There's no real happiness there. But there's the illusion of happiness. That is what happens. We're thinking, I'm enjoying. We're, we're th I'm making so much money. I'm making so much money. People are thinking, just like this uh, Bill Gates making so much money, and still he got divorced. His wife left him. He's not happy, miserable man, trying to be happy. Everyone's trying to be happy, but they're trying to find happiness by artificial means. The real happiness is within us. We have to awaken that happiness within, and that is Krishna consciousness. To look within, to look, to be introspective, not extravagant, but introspective. Looking within ourselves, taking pleasure in the self. All right, so Prabhupada. Prabhupada quotes this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam that we have, to, we have to be convinced that those people who gave up devotional service just to do austerities, just to practice austerities, that they're unfortunate souls. They have no information of the transcendental loving service of the Lord. They go off to do some austerities, go to Himalayas, live in the cave, fasting. So many things they will try to do to, uh, they're thinking, purify themselves. Monavrat, right? They, in Vrindavan there was the one temple there, the one man, he was going, Monavrat, he was starting his Monavrat. He was a vow to do monavrat for five years or something like that. So I was telling the devotees how we did. I was with Mahavishnu and we were doing book distribution. And we were on the road and the, there was this temple on, on a cave. We were, we were on the highway and we saw this temple on the mountain in a cave. And the driver wanted to stop to have a rest. And so we thought, let's go and see the temple. And so we went over to the temple, and the man was in there. One man was in there, sadhu, and he goes, 
So we understood, you know, Monavrat, you know. Anyway, we preached to him. It's good, you can preach to people like that. They're not, <laughs> they have nothing to. So, so we were preaching to him and, and we talked to him about the Bhagavad Gita and we had a Bhagavad Gita with us and we showed him the book and we said, You want a copy? He said, He wrote on the board, How much is it? <laughs> so we sold him the book. He bought the book. Hmm. So, even people doing monavrat, they sometimes they're lucky, they get the mercy of devotee. <laughs> people doing dry austerities, just so much trouble they undergo. What benefit do they get? Duties executed by all men are only so much useless labor if they do not provoke attraction for the personality of Godhead. Shrama eva hi kevalam, right? Useless labor. Undergoing these austerities, dry rituals, they have no real value. When they asked Jadbarat, Maharaj Rahugan wanted to know how Jadbarat had become such a great devotee. And then Jadbarat explained to him that you do not get this by just doing austerities, by sitting around a fire in the hot sun in the summer, or by submerging yourself in the icy water in the winter time. You do not get Krishna consciousness by any of these things. You have to get the dust from the feet of the devotee. You have to take the dust from the devotee and smear it all over our body. And Harani Kashipu was asking Prahlad, where did you get all this? How did you get all this stuff about Vishnu? I put you in the Gurukula to protect you and you've got so much, you're speaking so much about Vishnu. And Prahlad says, Matirna Krishna, Bipo Bipajeta Grehavratanam, Adanta Gobir Vishatam Tamishram, Punas Puna Charvita Charvan. Prahlad Maharaj is saying, You don't get it by your own endeavor, and you don't get it just by others' help either. If you've made a vow to stay in the material world, if you're in that mood of being grehavrat, to stay in the well of materialistic life, then you'll never become Krishna conscious. You'll remain chewing what has already been chewed. There's no pleasure in it, right? If you get the sugar cane after they've taken out all the juice, they put that sugar cane through the rollers and then they have that, the, 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 the sugar cane sticks are there. So if you try to chew them, it will just be like straw. There will be no juice there, there's no sugar. All the taste is gone. So that is chewing the chewed. Material life is like that. We are trying to take pleasure where there is no pleasure. We have to be convinced about these things. If we're not convinced about these things, then that we go back. We go back into the material life and we experience more. The miseries, the struggle. And we see people, they go back and then they, then they understand. Then they come back again to Krishna consciousness. It is further stated in the seventh canto, although mental speculators and fruitive actor, actors may perform great austerities and penances, they still fall down because they do not have information about the lotus feet of the Lord. The devotees of the Lord, however, never fall down 
In Bhagavad Gita 931, the Supreme Personality of Godhead assures Arjuna, Kuntiya, O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. So the devotees never fall down. But these other people, the jnanis and the yogis, who are doing all these austerities and tapasyas, they can fall down. They get the problems. Why? Arora krishrena param patam tata patanti ado nadreta yasmad angraya. They fall back into the... Why? Because of avishuddha buddhaya, because of the impure intelligence. They did not have the proper understanding about devotional service. They became bewildered or you could say confused about their duty. And they fall into the well again. So the jnanis and these yogis, they try to renounce everything, but again they get problems. They, come, they become again entangled. Sukadeva Goswami was in the womb 16 years. He did not want to come out because he was thinking, if I come out, Maya is there. Very dangerous. Better I just stay in the womb. Safer. But then he got convinced, no, it's okay. You can come out. You'll be safe. And he came out and immediately he left home. He didn't stay with his mother and father. Immediately he got out of the womb. He left. He didn't even wait to get the Brahman thread. Vyasadeva's going after him. Come back, come back. I have to make you a Brahman. He didn't care because he is Avadut. Avaduts don't need a Brahman thread. And there are these, uh, there are, we, I, we were in one temple, I saw the the sannyasis, you know, when, the, when they take sannyas, they take off their brahman thread and they cut off their sika. Like Lord Chaitanya, when Lord Chaitanya took sannyas, because he took sannyas in the line of Shankar. And so, no brahman thread, no sika. But in the Vaishnav line, we have sika, we have brahman thread. That's the Vaishnav. When the, when the devotees first came here in India, there was the, those two sannyasis, Yashodananda and Swami and Achyutananda and Swami. They were traveling in South India and they would go to meet the Sri Vaishnavas. And they met many of the different, they went to the different temples of the Sri Vaishnava. They were very happy to see that in our line we keep Ashika and we keep the Brahman thread even after sannyas. Be because they, these uh, other line, they don't, the, the smarta, smarta brahman and like that, they, they will cut off the sika, take off the brahman thread. So Shukadeva Goswami, he's avadut, he doesn't belong to any ashram, so he doesn't need a brahman thread. But still Vyasadeva wanted to give him brahman thread, <laughs> he's chasing after him. And when he's chasing after him, Sukadeva Goswami, somehow he went past a place where the young ladies were bathing. And the young women were bathing naked. But they didn't care because they saw him and they could understand his mind. They understood this, this young man, he's not in the material world. He was not interested in them and they were not bothered about him. But then Vyasadeva came. And when Vyasadeva came, all the young girls, oh, oh, quick, cover, get her cloth. They were, they were afraid to be naked with Srila Vyasadeva. So Vyasadeva was surprised. He thought, hey, I'm an old man. Why are you worried about me? My son is a young man. You didn't care about him. 
Why are you worrying about me? But the young girl said, you're in the world. You're of this world. He is not of this world. He was not identifying with the material world. So that is the great soul, like Shukadeva Goswami. He's avaduta, not of the world. Right? Want to come to that stage, get completely detached. I've, uh, there's a program uh, a devotee is doing, one devotee in America, he's doing a program about memories of Prabhupada. And he was taking the different qualities, the 26 qualities of a devotee. And he's interviewing different devotees about Prabhupada, how Prabhupada showed these qualities. So one of the qualities was perfect gentleman, that a devotee should be a perfect gentleman. So devotee uh, Bhakti Sundar Goswami, he's from South America, he's a South American. Bhakti Sundar Goswami was describing how he was in he was in New York at the time and Prabhupada had come there and he was watching the drama and he saw the drama. They were doing the age of Kali. How Kali personified comes and that brings all the different irreligious activities. So the devotees were doing the drama and at one point a young woman has to come on the stage. And they had this young woman and she was a very attractive woman, devotee lady, married. <laughs> and she came on the stage and then she was dressed very nicely and you know, all the young men they didn't like to look, you know. But pra Prabhupada was holding the flower and Prabhupada was watching and he was watching. Prabhupada didn't work. And so Prabhupada explained to the devotees afterwards, he said, devotee, when they see like that, when they see the young woman, they understand this is the creation of Krishna. That everything that we see that is beautiful and powerful and opulent, it is all just one tiny spark of the creation of the Supreme Lord. Devotee doesn't think, I will enjoy. The devotee doesn't think, young woman's for my enjoyment. But we understand it in relation to Krishna. So that is Krishna consciousness seeing everything in relation to Krishna. Prabhupada continues, again in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Neha Bikram. In this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution and a little advancement made can save us from the greatest danger. So, pratyavayo navidyate. There's no loss or diminution. Just like we go to something, oh, I wasted so much time. Oh, I wasted so much money. You would, so many things we lose. You know, you go there, oh, I shouldn't have gone there. I wasted all my time like but in devotional service, there's no loss or diminution. A little advancement made saves us from the danger of becoming an animal again, falling back into the lower species of life. So that is the point, that there's never any loss in Krishna. Oh, I went to the morning program. Oh, I don't think I should have went. I didn't really. But you go to the morning program. There's no loss. There's no dominion. Don't think ever that it was a waste of time. No. It's all going in our spiritual bank account. Right? We have a, you have your material bank account. We have our spiritual bank account, all of our assets, whatever we have done, and we take that with us. Devotional service is so pure and perfect 
that once having begun, one is forcibly dragged to ultimate success. When I first became a devotee, I thought, I'm just coming to learn how to cook. <laughs> I just want to learn how to cook, then I'll know how I can be a vegetarian. Because I didn't know how to cook vegetarian food. I thought, I'll, join, I'll just be a devotee for a little while, I just want to learn cooking. Here I am, 51 years later. <laughs> You, you get dragged in, you see, difficult to get out. <laughs> Sometimes a person will give up his ordinary material engagements and out of sentiment take shelter of the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord and thus begin, thus begin the preliminary execution of devotional service. Even if such an immature devotee falls down, there is no loss on his part. On the other hand, what is the gain of one who executes the prescribed duties according to his varna and ashram, but does not take to devotional service? Although a fallen devotee may take his next birth in a low family, his devotional service will nonetheless resume from where it left off. Devotional service is a haitaki apratihata. It is not the effect of any mundane cause, nor can it be terminated by any mundane cause, or permanently curtailed by any material interruption. Therefore, a devotee should be confident about his engagement and should not be very interested in the activities of the karmis, jnanis, and yogis. So this is one point which is made by Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in the Madhurya Katambini. He makes the point that what doesn't matter what your next birth is, you take whatever progress we have made in this life, in bhakti, we take it with us to the next life. And you can see the example in Srimad Bhagavatam, how Maharaj Chitraketu was cursed by Mother Parvati to become a demon, to become an asura. And Chitraketu became Vrita, Vritasura. And he had this huge, horrible body, just grotesque, horrible body. He was given that body, but he didn't lose his bhakti. Whatever devotion he had, he kept that devotion. And he, even as Vritasura, when he's fighting with Indra, Indra was reluctant to kill him because Indra was thinking, He's a great devotee. How can I kill him? He's a devotee. <laughs> it was very. It was a big, diff, a big problem for him. So, Prabhupada is making the point that somebody becomes a devotee, whatever progress they make, they'll never lose that. And we see, we see people sometimes they're devotees. When they were young, they were devoted, they go away, they come back many years later, they didn't forget anything. They remember every, And they come back and they're, they're preaching again, they're doing everything. So devotional service is like that, it's continued. You never lose the bhakti, whatever progress we have made. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes two situations. Somebody practices yoga for a little while and falls down. They will take birth in the heavenly planets. And in the heavenly planets they will enjoy. They will satisfy all their material desires. Then they will come back here to this planet and they will take birth in a aristocratic cultured family where they can go on in their devotional service. But if somebody's practiced yoga for a long 
time but still didn't get perfection, then they take birth in the family of devotees. And Prabhupada said, such a birth is rare. But both he and his spiritual master, they took birth in the family of devotees. So, when you take birth in the family of devotees, then it's great advantage. And they can quickly progress in devotional service. We have the, they have the deity worship course. Now, for the deity worship course, they want people to be second initiated. But they said, if you're born in a family of devotees, it's okay. You don't have to be second initiated. If, you, if you're brought, born in devotee family, because you're already got it. From, you must have good qualification from previous lives to be born in a devotee family. So they will take you in the deity worship course. So, so the point is, uh, spiritual advancement is never lost. We want to take every opportunity, therefore, do whatever service we can while we're here, while we're active, while we have a healthy body. Take the opportunity to do as much as you can for the service of Krishna. And it's eternal benefit. In Bhagavad Gita, in Bhagavatam, we read about people, sometimes they lose, they, they, they fall down, sometimes they fall down, not successful. Just like Puranjan. Puranjan, he, he got some problems. Daksha, Daksha, of course, he was not really devotee, he, but he was offensive. Ajamila was sinful, but he wasn't offensive. So there's some difference there. Ajamila was sinful, but he was never offensive. Therefore, he could somehow, before the end of his life, he could take shelter of devotional service. Dhritarashtra, he understood Krishna, that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. He understood, but he couldn't, he couldn't stop himself. He couldn't change. He couldn't give up his attachment to his own sons. So that kind of problem comes. Material attachment stops people from progressing. There was one American a folk singer, he got the Nobel Prize. He got Nobel Prize for Peace, I think last year or the year before. His name was Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan. And he, wrote, he, he used to write songs about peace and so on. So in one of his songs he wrote, he said, if you haven't got anything, then you don't have anything to lose. Right? Makes sense, right? Brahmacharis, you don't have anything to lose, right? No, you don't have anything, so you don't have to lose anything. That's the beauty of brahmachari life. Brahmacharis, what do you have? You have a tilak mirror, a lump of tilak, and a few dories. And, you, know, <laughs> you know, you don't have a house, you don't have a car, you don't have a job. And <laughs> you're lucky. That's the beauty of brahmachari life. You don't have anything, you don't have to lose anything. Other people, they worry about losing. Oh, I might lose, I might lose my job, I might lose... Uh, you. <laughs> but brahmachari is free. It's, it, no worries. There are certainly many good qualities among fruitive actors, philosophical speculators, and mystic yogas, yogis. But all good qualities automatically develop in the character of a devotee. 
No extraneous endeavor is needed as confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam. All the good qualities of the demigods manifest progressively in one who has developed pure devotional service. Because a devotee is not interested in any material activity, he does not become materially contaminated. He is immediately situated on the platform of transcendental life. However, one who engages in mundane activity, be he a so-called jnani, yogi, karmi, philanthropist, nationalist or whatever cannot attain the highest stage of Mahatma. He remains a dur atma or cripple-minded person. According to Bhagavad Gita, Mahatmanas O son of Prita, those who are not deluded the great souls are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Srila Prabhupada told us a conversation he had one time. He said he went to the post office and he was talking to the man in the, behind the counter in the post office and the man was saying to him, what is the need to be a devotee? He said, I'm honest, I'm a good man, I don't do any harm to anybody. Why I have to be a devotee? What difference is that? I'm already a good person. And Prabhupada explained to him, that you may say you're a good person, but you're not always a good person. Right? Sometimes you're in the mode of goodness, but sometimes you're influenced by passion. And sometimes you're influenced by ignorance, because it's the nature of the modes, that there's always competition between the modes. Sometimes the mode of passion conquers goodness. Sometimes the mode of ignorance conquers goodness. You cannot just simply say, I'm a good person. It's not true. You may be very expert in maintaining your family members or practicing the mystic yoga perfection. But if you're not a devotee, you don't have any good qualities. Of course, we may say, well, these devotees, they're not good qualities. Look, I know these devotees, they do so many things. But they're becoming good because they're engaged in devotional service. They may not be perfect today, but they're on the path. Just like if you're in the shower taking bath, nobody can criticize you for being dirty. Oh, you're so dirty, Prabhu. Oh, you're so, well, hey, I'm in the shower, you know, just wait, you know, <laughs> give me a few minutes. I'm just taking my bath. So, the same way, somebody's a devotee, they're doing devotional service. Oh, so you, you were lazy, you were sleeping in class, you were yawning, you, were, you got angry. We are practicing devotional service. One day soon, just now coming, we will be, we will be on that transcendental platform. Because we are properly situated because we're engaging in Krishna consciousness. So all the good qualities come in the devotees. Prabhupada had one girl chant the Ishopanishad mantras. This one girl, she told Prabhupada, Prabhupada, I've learned the Ishopanishad mantras. I can chant all the Ishopanishad mantras. So Prabhupada said, when they had a program, there were all these people there, all these Indian people there at the program. So Prabhupada called her up to chant the mantras. And so she was chanting the mantras. And so Prabhupada said to the people, well, what, what do you think? And 
the people would say, Oh, Swamiji, her pronunciation is not very good. Prabhupada said, Her pronunciation may not be very good, but her renunciation is very good. <laughs> so, so like that, renunciation is more important than pronunciation. We want to understand all the good qualities are there in the devotee. So don't criticize the devotees. Praise the devotees, glorify the devotees, serve the devotees. I'm not a devotee, but always think I'm trying to become a devotee. Just to finish here, the last part. Since since all the devotees of the Lord are under the protection of His Supreme Potency, they should not deviate from the path of devotional service and take to the path of karmi, jnani or yogi. This is called utsahan nischayat dayaryat tat tat karma pravartana enthusiastically executing the regulative activities of devotional service with patience and confidence. In this way, one can advance in devotional service without hindrance. So, you have to understand Rupa Goswami has listed six items for Krishna Consciousness, three of them, the first three, are more internal. Enthusiasm, patience, determination. And the other three are activities, things which we, we have to do, like the regulative principles of hearing and chanting and remembering Krishna. And associating with the devotees and avoiding the non-devotees. Those are the external physical activities. But the mental activity are also the enthusiasm, patience and determination. So these six items are being highlighted, brought to us by Srila Rupa Goswami. We want to appreciate our good fortune to be able to hear from Srila Rupa Goswami, who was personally taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Are there any questions? Prabhu? convinced about this process so as a sadhaka we don't i don't have that much of experience so if you can explain more about how we can be more confident and convinced of this path and not to deviate from this how to be more confident well we have to understand that krishna consciousness is giving us the highest thing that it's something very wonderful and Prabhupada is telling us there's no loss, or Krishna is telling us, there's no loss, there's no diminution in Krishna consciousness. Just a little advancement saves us from the greatest danger. So that, we should be confident hearing that. That is something very wonderful. You just do a little devotional service and you can get so much benefit. So we should think, I definitely want to take advantage of this process. And we see, so many people are practicing Krishna consciousness all over the world. Why shouldn't I do it? If they can do it, and they're happy, and they're satisfied, why shouldn't I be satisfied? There's so many scholarly people, and there's so many uneducated people. There's people from all walks of life. They're all in Krishna consciousness. So why shouldn't I also take advantage of this process? We should 
like that, we should think positively that it's an opportunity. What else am I going to do if I'm not going to be a devotee? You should think about it. What are you going to do in the material world? Go out there into the rat race, rush to work every morning, eight o'clock, you got to be there by eight o'clock. Sometimes you have to work all night, night shift, and oh, and you have to work with so many nasty people. The, the employer is nasty. <laughs> He's saying, work harder. Sell more, do more, bring more money. <laughs> it's not a very pleasant world. Sometimes, you know, when we're devotees, we forget how ugly the material world is. Just like when I, when I go distributing books, when I go distributing books, you go, I would go so often shop to shop. And I, I, you see the different places, I go sometimes in the places where people are working and I thought, wow, my goodness, this is horrible. I don't know how they can manage to work here, you know. <laughs> sometimes the place is so smelly, full of chemicals, sometimes so noisy and so dirty and, you know, and, you know the different conditions which people have to put up with. And you see people ride these motorbikes, going to work every day, you know, race, you know, have to... It's so dangerous, you know. I thought, I, that kind of life, I don't know. I, I, is it so attractive? I don't think so. And what do they get at the end of it? What do they get from it all? They earn some money, then the government will take the tax. You've got to pay so much tax and so many things have to be done. Is there, is there so much benefit there in material life? And so, I'd rather be a devotee and just stay, <laughs> just stay in Krishna consciousness. So we should be confident that Krishna has promised. Krishna said, I will deliver. My devotee never perishes. Just be a devotee. You get Krishna's protection, Krishna's guarantee. But what do you get in the material world? You have no guarantee. There's no security there. Yes, any other question? Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj Ji. Uh, uh, I see uh, uh, devotees are so happy serving Krishna, performing devotional services. It is so blissful. But why uh, I mean, this, uh, a devotee's life is austere life? Tapasya and all those things. Devotees have an austere life? It is called that devotee's life is austere. They are doing a lot of sacrifice. But in fact, in reality, I see that it is so blissful, uh, happy, serving Lord. Who, who said devotees are having a still life? It is written in the, somewhere, I, I read that, you know, they, they, their life is very austere. Oh, not our devotees. <laughs> Prabhupada said this is a, a movement for recreation only. Just. <laughs> Chanting, dancing, and feasting. Recreation. No, we don't believe in austerities. Austerities make the heart hard. Hard heart is not good for Krishna consciousness. We want to be soft hearted. If you do too much austerities, you become proud. The ego will be, I'm so renounced, I'm so detached. That is a problem. That is not Krishna consciousness. So, and Prabhupada was also talking about austerities, that people who do these austerities, 
They have, they have no experience of the taste of Krishna consciousness. But people who have tasted a little nectar in the service of Krishna, they can never take up that kind of austerity, dry austerities, like sometimes the jnanis or the Buddhist monks, they do that kind of thing. They'll go into the forest, you know. And the, or you go, even you go to the Buddhist monastery for the weekend. Don't speak to anybody. Right? You go, can't go in the Buddhist, we sit, sit down and meditate. Three hours later, okay, time for a little break, you know, have a little lunch or something. Then come back, more meditation. Don't speak. <laughs> The whole weekend, don't speak to anybody. That's their idea. So that, that dry austerity, we speak about Krishna. We're talking about Krishna, we're talking about the process of devotional service. And so dry austerities is not Krishna consciousness. We don't have any real austerity in Krishna consciousness movement. We talk about simple living, high thinking. We don't say austerity. Of course, austerity, you could say in one way, is one of the pillars of religion. And we practice austerity by giving up pride because pride is a kind of intoxication. So intoxication we don't allow, no intoxication. And pride is an intoxication. So we have to give up pride. We have to be humble. And we sit just like we're sitting, you're sitting on the floor, you know. So that, that's humble, humility. We're cultivating humility, not pride. You do austerities, you're getting proud, pride, right? Pride comes before the fall. So we're very careful to avoid pride. Intoxication is like, pride is one intoxication. So people who are intoxicated, they won't be austere. People who take alcohol, and cigarettes and even coca-cola and tea and coffee these are all intoxicants and pan also we don't take these things so that's austerity that's our austerity but we have prasadam we don't even think about you know anything else we have nice prasadam to take why should we worry about a little pan <laughs> or cigarettes? Gorgovinda Maharaj calls cigarettes the, wi the white flute. <laughs> so these things are useless. They don't mean anything to devotees. We don't need these things. So, yeah, that's our austerity, no intoxication. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. What is the best way for glorifying devotees? And uh, too much glorification also, like, it is hindrance for devotion service, for devotees, I mean, for new devotees. Sometimes they go out and they, they you know, do some extraordinary service so if we glorify them uh, like it is not good for them also too much glorification so how much to glorify and to which level we can keep that glorification mm. well generally a devotee will not want yeah def definitely it's not good to glorify a devotee but at the same time, it's not good to find fault with them. 
So if you have the tendency to find fault with devotees, it's better to speak something good about them. But don't speak it to their face. You can speak it behind their back. You don't want to glorify somebody in front of them. That's, they don't like that. Devotees don't want to be praised. They want to offer all the praise to the spiritual teacher. Right? If there's any praise, we give it to the spiritual teacher. So, generally, it's not good. Actually, it's, it's better for a devotee to hear his criticism than to hear his praise. Because if he's criticized more, then he can think, I have to improve, I have to do better. They say, he who, he who praises you, he's your enemy. Because he's praising you, you're thinking, oh, I'm a great devotee, I'm very great. I'm... But somebody criticizes you, yeah, you're, you will think, yeah, I'm very fallen. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not a good devotee. So criticism is better than praise for a devotee. And Prabhupada would talk about, he would quote Chanakya Pandit, that Chanakya Pandit said, that the father or the teacher will always find fault with the student rather than praise them. We will find fault with them because that will encourage them to do more, to do better. But if you praise them, well done, very good, and oh, I'm very great, <laughs> but we won't do so much. So praise is not encouraged. But that is the job of the teacher, the father or the teacher. Prabhupada said, because I am the good, I can find fault with my disciples. But it doesn't mean another devotee can find fault with another devotee. And Prabhupada used to say, he said, because I am honeycombed with defects, therefore I see defects in others. So if we're seeing defects, if we're seeing faults in people, it's because there are faults in us. That's why we can see them. So we have to be careful. So the better to glorify Guru and Krishna. We give all the credit to Guru and Krishna. All right. So. So I, I'm leaving today, so thank you very much for my stay here, and I enjoyed myself very nicely here, very nice atmosphere, very nice warm association, and we hope we'll see you again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we are very, very thankful to His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinasa Narsimha Swami Maharaj for his wonderful association for last nine days. We had so much of nice uh, learning from Maharaj's uh, classes every morning and in the afternoon. We hope and pray for Maharaj, your association, more frequent in Hyderabad. Please visit and give your association. Yes. And we look forward to maybe most probably come next year to Mayapur for Navdeep Mandal Parikrama in your association, Jai. as you mentioned <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. So we express our deep gratitude and thanks by once loudly chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare His Holiness Bhakti Vignavinasa Narasimha Swami Maharaj Ki. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki.